What's up everyone, I'm Nick Raboy, and in this tutorial we're going to see how to display the game version number within your Unity 3D game. Um, so up on my screen you'll notice that I do have version 2.0.1. Uh, that, for example, that 2.0.1 is the actual version of my game, and it's something that we're displaying on the screen. Now, if you walk away from this tutorial learning anything at all, or maybe you don't want to save for the whole thing, uh, know that application.version is how you get the version number of your application. So the application.version field is the information that you're looking for. Whether or not you want to display it on the screen like I did as a text game object is totally up to you. I encourage you to stick around to see how I did it. Um, but application.version is what you're looking for. Before we get to invested, I want to put out a reminder to hit that like button and then subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're gonna take a step back and we're gonna start with a fresh project for this example. So right on my screen, I have a fresh Unity 2D project open. So I've added nothing to it beyond clicking on the 2D template that Unity offers when I start my application or my Unity hub. So we're gonna see a lot of different things and um, a lot of it is just around presenting the version number on the screen. But like I mentioned previously, all you really need to know is application.version. Now let's go ahead and add a new game object. This is going to represent our text. So what we're going to do is we're going to say game object from the menu. We're going to drop down to UI and then we're going to click on text. It's going to add the canvas and event system, but what we really care about is text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that version info text. And what we also want to do here, because it's not going to present properly on the screen, is we want to change how the camera is reflected on the canvas. So let's go ahead and say canvas, and then let's go look at the render mode and change it from screen space overlay to screen space camera. And we want to define our active camera. So we can either click the little button on the side, or what I like to do is just drag over our main camera into the render camera area. And now we've got something that's a little easier to work with. And if we zoomed in, we would see new text at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and make it a little more readable by clicking on version info text. Let's go ahead and give it maybe a font size of let's say 50. Uh, we'll do center align and we'll do middle. And let's go ahead and change the actual color of the text to let's say white. It might make it a little easier to see. So we're going to say uh, six F's for the hexadecimal value. And then let's zoom in, let's, let's drag the boundaries to this particular text item to fill the whole canvas. We have new text. New text doesn't really help us. Let's go ahead and rename it. We'll add a placeholder value. Let's call it version. And let's say XXX. Now on our first frame, it will show the actual version of the application or game, regardless of platform. But even before that first frame is rendered, let's just go ahead and label it as XXX, even though the user should never ever see that. All right, now that we have our text in place, let's go ahead and create a script that will actually have our code to get that version number. So drop into the assets area, we can go ahead and create a new script directory or for this particular example, it's probably safe just to add a new C sharp script to the root. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say create, and I'm going to say C sharp script. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it version info. And you can call it whatever you want. The name is not really important. Once that script is created, go ahead and open it up in whatever editor you feel the most comfortable in. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, but it doesn't really matter. Now, when you load it up, you're going to see all the boilerplate Unity 3D stuff. Um, we don't really care about the update lifecycle event in this particular example because we're only ever going to show the version number what it is when the application first starts. It's not like our version number is going to change mid application. So we're going to remove it. We are going to make use of the start function. Um, so let's go ahead and leave that. What we want to do is we want to do an import because we're working with UI text elements. So we're going to say using, we're going to say unity engine.ui. Inside of our version info class, let's go ahead and create a private variable to represent the text component for our particular game object. We're going to say private. We're going to say text. It's going to say underscore version number text or version info text. Doesn't really matter what you want to call it. 
Inside of this start method, let's go ahead and gain access to the text component of our game object. So we're gonna say version number text equals get component, and we're gonna say text. Now that we actually have the text component, let's go ahead and set the value of that text component. So we're gonna say version info text or version number text dot text. So we're gonna set the text field of it. And we're gonna say equals version. And we're gonna say plus application dot version. Now this is the big kicker item. This is, this is how we actually get that application version. You don't have to display it on the screen as a text field. You can add it to the logs or whatever you wanna do. It's totally up to you. Uh, but let's go ahead and save it. And let's go back into our Unity IDE. Now that we have our script completed, let's go ahead and click on the version info text text game object. Scroll down. You can either say add component to find your script or what I like to do again, just drag that script on over. It'll add it and it'll get the actual version number of our application. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So you'll notice that it says version 1.0. Um, it doesn't say version XXX, it says 1.0. So let's understand where that 1.0 comes from. So what we can do is we can say file, we can say build settings, and then we can click on player settings. You'll notice that we have information about the player. What's important to us is the actual version, which in this case is 1.0. This version is reflected regardless of platform. It could be the editor. It could be Windows, Mac, Android, PlayStation, Xbox, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the fact is that this is the actual application version and that's the application version that we obtained in our script. So let's go ahead and change it. Let's go ahead and say 2.0.1. It doesn't really matter what you put into this particular text field. We're gonna exit out of these windows. We're gonna say run again. And as you can see, that new version was reflected. And this is pretty valuable stuff because maybe, maybe you're creating a game and you want the either the developer or even the user to know what version of the game that they're particularly using. Um, because you don't want them to be using an old outdated version. Uh, maybe you don't have any kind of cloud updates enabled. Uh, so you wanna know. And this is from my own personal perspective, I've fallen victim of using the wrong game binary plenty of times. I'm developing, I have 12 different versions of the game floating around. I don't really know which one I'm using. Um, so just having the actual version number somewhere on the screen, maybe when it when it loads in the splash screen area, um, it's very helpful. So once again, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please go ahead and hit that like button and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but as a result, it really does mean a whole lot to me when you do that. If you have any kind of questions regarding this tutorial, drop them in the comments. Hopefully I was able to help you out. Until next time, hope you have a great rest of your day.